<clears throat> we have John Schuster in this morning, and uh, I've been looking forward to this opportunity like the day I watched you guys win the gold medal. Congratulations, by the way. Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. That's um, it, it, it was rewarding because you're from the United States, but it was even more rewarding because you're a friend of mine. Yeah. And I love seeing my friends do well in what they do. It's uh, it, there's some, there's something different to be said about that. I think, yeah, you know, that's why even for me, like the Olympics end up being so special. I mean, um, you know, we got friends throughout across different sports, and even I mean, honestly, even in curling and you know, the team we're playing in the gold medal game are friends of ours, and it was, it was, you know, it was fun seeing those guys do as well as they're doing too. So, um, and and that's that's another question I want to ask you, being that I've gone through the curling uh, Duluth curling, and everybody is friends, and you wind up competing against some of those friends. Being friends with Canada and everybody else that you compete with, is it hard to watch them when you're beating them? Because you know you've been there. No, no, no. I think uh, once you're once you're out on the ice, everybody's fair game. So okay, um, you know it's uh, <laughs> it's actually even. I mean, you you take definite pride in the fact that you know these guys and how they act on the ice, and when you can shake them a little bit when that's going on, it's uh, you know you, you definitely. So it's a double-edged sword. It's it, it is your it best is. friends, and you and you love curling against them, but to turn the blade on them because you know how to beat them. And, Not and, even know how, but when you, you, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, so now that you've uh, won the gold medal, there's got to be some opportunities coming your way. Uh, obviously, to do more curling, to show people curling and things like that. What about uh, some entertainment kind of stuff? Um, yeah, I think uh, you know I had a gentleman come up to a meet and greet we're doing in uh, Bryant Park in New York City. And, you know, some some executive from U.S. Bank and was like, "Hey, if you uh, if you don't if you don't write a book and make a movie, you're absolutely insane." And I'm like, "He's like, no, seriously. He's like, that's right now. It's what what your guys' story is and what your personal story is 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 absolutely is is bestseller material is um is box office gold." And he he's like, "I'd be completely surprised if you guys weren't being bombarded by you know those requests." And I mean, he was pretty right we've had uh all kinds of groups of people from hollywood or writers and directors and production groups and um that have wanted to uh buy our life rights from us really? and uh yeah to make movies and i mean there's even a group that literally wants to fly up here early next week and and give us their pitch and show us that they actually have the funding in the studio already to go so uh, allegedly which again from my hollywood friends think that that's pretty incredible so so now, uh, uh, are there some where there are actors that you kind of go, I would love for them to play me? Uh, you know, there's there's actually people that are talking about like, um, like what movies they've produced and and uh, and been a part of and been like, yeah, it's uh, those are definitely people that, you know, would, I think could probably do your uh, your your flick justice. So right. Um. Any any uh, maybe maybe you can't talk about this. Are there any big time actors who have come forward and said, "I would love to play you"? <laughs> uh, there haven't been. There was one one group, and it got again. This was a guy who was saying he was involved with these people, which I'm not sure. Okay, because you know he, they didn't have many writing credits together or that kind of stuff. But um, one guy was, you know, said Jake Gyllenhaal, who played the guy from in Stronger, and it was the yep. compar- allegedly the group from that movie. Okay, um, that contacted me personally, and then um, like yesterday, allegedly Paul Rudd was trying to reach out to me for some reason, which. I don't know if that had anything to do with that, or if he was just a fan of curling, or right. You know, it was like, hey, I, you know, if you're gonna be in LA, I want to come hang out because that would be cool to hang out with him. Yeah, he's like, probably he might be number one for me actor wise. Um, so. I'd watch that though. It might wind up being a comedy. <laughs> well, you know what though, I, my teammates think it is a kind of a comedy. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's very much funny that happened up until <laughs> we won. <laughs> um, you know, the thing is, is I think it would be a great movie, not because it's a good story. But because all of you guys are nice guys and all of you guys have this great life and I think people would it would resonate with people because they 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 feel like they are you. Yeah, no, it's and, and that's exactly I mean I I mean we we obviously train as hard as any athletes and, and, and really people the, don't know we, that. I think people just think you guys can get out there and throw Yeah, the these rocks, are the four four beer. dads that showed up or that, you know, were trying to get away from their wife and kids that uh showed up at the Olympics and became champions is what I think I was on Reddit and that kind of thing. So, yeah. But no, it's uh yeah, I mean every single day for the last four years since uh the last Olympics ended, you know, was geared up, you know, with me focused on how to how I could get myself to the place uh to get A get back to the Olympics and B put ourselves in a some place where we could have a chance at at finishing on the podium and um yeah for to have that come through uh is is pretty special yeah 
Well, I was overjoyed when I watched you guys play. Now, what what are um, since the gold medal? What has been some really cool things? I know I was impressed that you guys got to do the hockey thing for the that, NHL. That that was, I mean, I mean, being on Fallon was was, uh, I mean, incredible. Yeah, he's incredible, and he, the you know, the conversations we had with him prior to uh, backstage, um, just awesome. I mean, he was he was so excited for for us and for whatever, and he, you know, he even pointed out to us, he's like, I don't know what, with stuff going on and maybe I'm making this bigger than his, but I just feel like America really needed this like right now. Yeah. Like needed you guys to do what you did. And, um, and that was pretty, I mean, obviously like, like incredibly special to have him say that and, and really mean it. Um, and then the, the whole Capitals game experience of the, the outdoor game was, I I can't even tell you. I mean, there's 38,000 people in that place. Um, and we couldn't walk down the, you know, out around the stadium without uh, without people like you know trying to get pictures, telling us congratulations, telling us thank you. Um, you know, I mean, people cr- getting shaking, crying, like in the whole thing out in New York. But at this at the Capitals game for sure. And then when we actually did our thing out on the ice, um, I mean, the entire place just electric as we're standing there getting ready to throw it. And then they announced us, and when we threw it, it it, it went from electric to like just mental, like. <laughs> um, it was, I, I, I said it was, uh, I told my teammates after it was done, I said, that was, that was up there with any opening ceremonies we've ever walked that I've ever walked. And I said, I think for me, like of moments outside of, you know, podium was, was, uh, 2006 opening ceremonies, my first one. And it was outdoors and, you know, we saw our families, like that was probably number one. And I think that was number two in front of the other three opening ceremonies. Cause it was just so unbelievable. And it was, again, it was people out there chanting USA and, um, and going crazy for uh, for me and the boys, and um, and it was just fun. And the cool part is, you know, this area is so hockey uh, minded. For you guys to get to do a hockey game, that's like the goal. Yeah, yeah, I don't, for sure. For, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool. And then also to have, I mean, obviously the probably the the hockey player that has the biggest connection to us up in the Northland playing in the game. So yeah, you know, because with Matt Niskanen playing for the Capitals and. Um, Former UMD player. Former UMD and up originally from Mountain Iron up there. So, uh-huh. uh, And then, you know, Oshie being on their team as well, and, and we got to know him really well back in 14, the day after he shot all those shootout goals for the, uh, you know, against Russia in 2014. I don't know if you remember that or not. Yes, but, I do. Um, the very next day he hung out in the Procter & Gamble house for probably like, you know, a solid two hours with uh, with myself and, and Jared Zezel and his parents who are huge UND people because he went to North Dakota as well. Right. And, uh, and, yeah, so, you know, saw him a little bit before the game and, and after we dropped the puck and everybody shook hands and whatever, as we were about to walk off, you know, Oshie and Niskanen came over there and were freaking out and they thought it was just awesome. Um, and it got the energy going and the Capitals scored like, you know, there were four goals in the first six minutes of the game and three of them were by the Caps. And I like to think that uh, that the energy that was going in the stadium and we had some small part of it. So Yeah. <laughs> hey, take credit where, where you can, you know. Um, the other part that I thought was really cool is I saw all of your guys' family that made it over. How... How was that to share everything with your family? Um, it was. I mean, during the games, it was awesome, and their support up in the stands is uh, was second to none for sure. It, um, it really felt like the last, you know, four games or five games, like it felt like a home game. And you know, even while we were playing Canada in the semis, one of their players was like, "Man, this was like playing against Gushu up in Newfoundland in the Briar." Because our, <laughs> I mean, not our family was joined by every other person that was USA fans in the building, and and they were loud and proud and made sure that we knew they were there and. Um, you know, that whole part was special. The only part that, you know, kind of got shorted is it's not possible for when you, when you win or anything like that, for them to get down to ice level. Right. And then you go and do this whirlwind kind of media stuff. And, and we were able to see them for about five minutes of, you know, in between interviews and stuff. And that was kind of garbage. Cause, uh, right. you know, I literally, my Sarah was, um, when, when we got, you know, she got home and I wasn't home at like literally one of the first times like we got to really even share a moment was, was at the airport here. Well, actually, they stayed in the one in the cities, but at at the airport in, in Minneapolis, you know, days later, which um was was really unfortunate. But at the same point, um, you know, we were definitely making lots of eye contact when they're in the stands during the right. during that final and after and um and that kind of stuff. But yeah. And your son became like the unofficial darling of the Olympics. It was very cool. He, I, he I, got invited I to the I White s- House. Really? Yeah, Ivanka she invited him to the White House to come lead the White to lead Everybody in the USA cheer when we when we go visit the White House. We'll see if that uh, we'll we'll see if the old Trumpinator can come through with that. Yeah, I saw. I was I watched uh, all kinds of things at the Olympics. I was really into the Nordic skiing and and I saw. 
Chad Sumlin make his call too. I'm that gonna was go awesome. He he did an incredible job of just letting emotion take over and. But that um, I love it was, that. It, no, he he did an incredible job of of being real and I mean yeah that was a that was a huge moment. I I tell you what I watched that thing. I'm I'm talking about it getting chills. I yeah. I watched Jesse turn that corner and make that kick and every single time just and it might be the USA athlete in me might be just the athlete but just straight up I'm talking about it and I have the hair on my back is standing. I just chills. Yeah. Back of my neck is just I mean because it was that special and and for him to really just let it let it loose there it was pretty fun. I'm gonna go harass him about that here in a few Please minutes. Please do when it. I, uh, he he helps me with grandma's marathon every year. He's in the women's car and uh and he lets his emotion out and that's why I keep asking him back because I love when people can put emotion into it because everybody else feels the same thing then. Yeah. You absolutely. know, you, you kind of understand the the whole emotion slash sports thing. Yep. You and, know and yeah and he was he was an athlete, you know that and and I think and still coaches. portrays it really well, yeah, and he yeah. portrays it really well. So, uh, it, uh, yeah, he, he's he's just an awesome guy. I've known him for a long time. So, well, uh, uh, John Schuster, gold medalist. I want to thank thank you for letting me wear the gold medal. It looks this good on so you, man. Cool. It I looks know, good on you. And you know, when, when you're when you're a former teammate, for sure, you've earned that right to wear that right. thing for <laughs> for a long interview. Because uh, yeah, like you, I, I'm sure your listeners know because you probably. T- but I mean, you were a full teammate of mine for a full year, I was, man. I, I, so. I don't brag about it much because, really, I, I didn't do very well. And, and I think maybe I gave you a shot somewhere in some Olympic because of something I did terribly bad. But, uh, yeah, it was great playing with you. And the nice part is um, with curling is you can – everybody has had some sort of national uh, competition in them. And everybody is so willing to say, you know, maybe if you had done it this way, and they're so willing to make you better. And I think that's why we churn out so many good curlers out of the Duluth Curling Club, you know? Yeah, yeah for sure. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a very welcoming place. So. Yes, it is. Well, John, thank you so much, and you deserve all of this, and so do the other guys. You guys are all really, really nice guys. And I, the only person I really feel sorry for is Joe Polo because he's a good curler too, and we never even saw him. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, that's where I've – Anytime I get a chance to talk about Joe, it's uh, you know, he threw rocks the entire Olympics too. It just weren't on camera, like, right? Uh, you know, an alternate. What their main job right now is is to go at nighttime and, and match rocks and make sure that um, that we have the best potential rocks in our hands when we're, th- when we're throwing them during the game. As far as like back end players, because there can be a a bummer rock here and there, and and he's one of the best in the world at it. So, um, you know, we were throwing every game out there, throwing twenty rocks per game, and. You know, his 20 rocks were happening at nighttime and were every bit as important as the 20 that we were throwing during games. So That's good um, to know he, because he, I don't think everybody knows his, that. His medal is, uh, was very, very well earned. That's um, good to know. Very well earned. So uh, really, we are we are really excited and uh, and that for Joe. And, um, yeah, and, and he's just an awesome teammate. So Very cool. Well, thank you so much, John Schuster, gold medalist. And uh, here we go right here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks, Chris.